Okay, welcome. Today we're going to talk about uh, chapter two, well, section C of chapter two, and this is going to be about problem solving hints. Okay, so let's jump right in. Okay, so now remember the uh, understand, solve, explain process. So step number one, we understand the problem. Um, step number two, solve the problems. And then C, explain uh, your result. Okay, so here's hit number one. There may be more than one answer. So these are some of the guidelines and hints that you want to pay, pay attention to when you're working on problem solving, uh, word problems especially. There may be more than one answer. There may be more than one method, right? You've seen me actually do a couple of those where there was uh, more than one way to uh, get to the correct answer. Uh, use appropriate tools. Four, consider similar, simpler problems because the solution to those problems may help you with finding a solution to the more complicated problems. Hint five, consider equivalent problems with simpler solutions. Six, approximations can be helpful. You can approximate answers and that'll help you with determining whether you got the correct answer or not. Seven, try alternative patterns of thought. And eight, more, most importantly, don't spin your wheels. If you're spending time uh, trying to figure out a problem and you find you're spending more than, I'd say, what, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, uh, and you find yourself, you get frustrated, you know, stop. Take a break. Go for a walk. That The best thing that you could do is just give yourself a break because it gives yourself your brain. It gives your subconscious brain time to keep processing the information. Um, and and uh, or, or get uh, help, right, from the tutoring center or from me or from have somebody else, a second pair of eyes to take a look at it because maybe you're missing something and a fresh pair of eyes will catch it, okay? Uh, but the most important thing is don't spend an exorbitant amount of time trying to figure it out. Don't be stubborn. Obviously, I want you to spend time working on it. Do you get your best effort. Don't, don't spend a minute on it and then just give up and try to get some help. Really work on the problem. Spend time trying to figure it out. And when you find yourself, you're either getting frustrated um, or, well, even if you're getting frustrated, again, give yourself time to work on the problem, to come up with the answer. And I would say after 10, 15 minutes, you're not anywhere closer, you're not going anywhere, then take a break. Like I said, go go for a walk, go talk to a friend, go do anything unrelated to this problem, and then come back to it. Okay, give yourself a half an hour, 20 minutes, go work on something else, and then come back to it and, and try again. Sometimes it's helpful just to just basically crumple up the paper and start over from scratch. I've done that too. Here's an example. So tickets uh, for fundraising event were priced at $10 for children and $20 for adults. Shauna worked the first shift at the box office selling a total of $130 worth of tickets. However, she did not take uh, or keep a careful account uh, of how many tickets she sold for children and adults. How many tickets of each type did she sell? Okay, so here's the thing. So we know the total amount of the proceeds, right? But we don't know how many of each type of ticket was sold. So here's where we're gonna have to figure, you know, do some problem solving, right? So we know that each of the adult tickets are $20 and the child tickets are ten dollars okay so we know that there can only be an even number for adults right so the total here is is 130 so we can the best we can do is come up with some possible solutions, right? So we know that um, there has to be at least one, well, one right away, it's odd number. So one, or excuse me, there's a, a 13, right? In the tens, right? So if we just look at each ticket is 20 for adults and 10 for, for, um, for children, 
uh, we know there has to be at least one adult ticket because the number of, or excuse me, one child ticket because of the number of adult tickets um, has to be even, has to be an even number of adult. Uh, okay, let me put it this way. It has to be a multiple of 20. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, a multiple of 20. Okay, so if we start with a one child ticket, okay, oops, one child ticket, that's $10. And that would mean what? That there would be six adult tickets. Because that would be the other 120, right? So we could have one and six, right? Okay. Now, since we have, since it's, since each adult ticket is $20, okay, um, we could say, okay, well, what if there was five? Okay, well, five adult tickets, right? If there was five adult tickets, that would be a hundred, which means that we'd have to have three child tickets. And then if we had four adult tickets, that would mean we'd have what? We'd have to have um, five child tickets, right? And you see where I'm going with this. And so if we do this and we go in like fashion, we find that what? It keeps going on, right? Oops, let me go back. So in other words, if we go child and adult, right? We could have one and six, three and five, five and four, seven and three, oops, seven and three, right? And so on and so forth. Okay, until we have zero adult tickets and 13 child tickets. Okay, so that's where we go. Okay, now, what about this one? Let's see if we can find a pattern for this. So we're gonna count the, all of the possible squares here, okay? So we let's start with how many um, squares are, have the same number of, so, uh, same, same length on all sides, right? So to be a square, you have to have the same length. So if we look at this checkerboard here, so we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares on a side. So let's start with an eight by eight square. An eight by eight square, there's only gonna be one of those, right? So if we have an eight by eight square, that equals one, okay? Now, what's the next square that we can have? Well, let's do, let's go down by one, right? So a seven by seven square would be, oops, Well, let me erase that. Okay, so a seven by seven square would be, let's say this one, right? We could have that one, or we could have, we could move it over. We could have that one, okay? Or we could have that one, right? So we could just move it over. And so when we move it over, so when we slide it over for each corner, right? We end up with four, right? So a seven by seven will give us four. Okay, what about a six by six. Well, now a six by six, let's start in the upper left, right? So six by six would be this one. So that's one. 
And then we can move it over one to the right. And that means we've got this six by six square, right? And then we can move it over to the right one more spot. And now we've got this six by six square, right? And then we can move it down. From there, we can move it down. And then we get this six by six square. So we can slide it all the way around, right? And so if we start with the upper left-hand corner, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We get nine. We get one, okay, so if we get one, two, three, so we slide it across the top, we got three, and then slide it down, we get two. Slide it across, three, four, five, and then six. Nope, hold on, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, right? So we get eight if we slide it along the edge, but then don't forget the middle, because the middle will also give us a six by six, square. So that means we get nine, right? Like I said, nine. Okay. So now we get one square. Okay. But can we see a pattern? Well, let's do one more. Let's do five by five. Okay. If we do a five by five, let's start with these middle. So there's this one, right? And so what happens? We can move it around, right? We can move it to the left, to the right. We can move it to the center, right? So if we do, we move it over. So we'll have one and then two, three, four. And then we'll move it down, five, six, seven. And then we move it over here, seven, um, eight, nine, ten. Ten. And then eleven, twelve. But then we got more in the middle. Right, 12, and then we've got thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, and we'll end up with sixteen squares. Okay, so what do you notice about these numbers? Well, if you notice the pattern, then, then you can get the rest of these very quickly instead of trying to count all of these squares, right? And if we just want one square, let's just go all the way down to one. What if, what if we want a one by one square, right? We already can see that. We got one, two, three, four, five. We got 64 squares, right? Because we got eight times eight. So this will be equal to 64. We know that. So what about the rest of these, right? So how can we see a pattern here? Well, all of these are perfect squares. This is equal to one squared. This is equal to two squared, three squared, four squared, all the way up to eight squared, okay? And so now we know the pattern, so it's gonna be what? To, if we wanted to find all possible squares, we would just add up all of these squared values, and we can do that easily on a calculator. Okay, so let's go through this. Okay. And there we go. And so there are 204 possible squares in this checkerboard.
eight by eight checkerboard. All right, that's it. You have a great day and I'll see you later.